This is day two in my six mark challenge for AQA GCC Science. In the run up to the exams, Monday to Saturday, I'll post a new video each day with a six mark question so you could practice how to answer them. You can find a link in the description below to each week's questions and you can access all of the videos via the playlist. Today's question is a great one to include in your revision because this comes up on both chemistry paper one and physics paper one. And even if it's not the six mark question this year, there's always something on the paper that relates to this question. Now, before we dive in, I've got a couple of little reminders for you. The first one is that in these six mark questions, you're given credit for your ideas being laid out logically so that your examiner can follow them. But there is no credit whatsoever for writing in full sentences or paragraphs or anything like that. Even when it comes to spelling, the only time that your examiner is going to mark you down for it is if there's ambiguity and that word could be a different word and it's just not clear from the spelling. The rest of the time, you really don't need to worry about it. It's absolutely fine and in fact completely encouraged for you to answer in bullet points or a table because this is just going to make it easier for your examiner to see what you're trying to get across. The other thing you need to remember is that a lot of these six mark questions are level marked. And what that means is that you don't get six marks for six true things. You need to make sure that you're covering all of the different aspects of the question. So for instance, here, we need to make sure that we are describing the atom, but that also we're naming some subatomic particles, we're giving their relative masses, and we're giving their relative charges. And if you don't do those things, you're going to be capped at the lower marks. So if you haven't already answered the question, pause the video and give yourself six minutes for this six mark question. Before you start answering this question in full, I would make sure that you've jotted down some ideas so that you can be sure that you've answered all the different parts. So for instance, you're asked about the individual subatomic particles, those bits of the atom that are smaller than the whole atom. So I would jot yourself down a little note that you mean protons, electrons and neutrons. Likewise, for the relative masses, we should have one for a proton, one for a neutron and very small for an electron. You might have learnt an actual numerical value like 1 over 1840 or 1 over 2000. And if you include that, that's absolutely fine. But the specification does say very small. So very small is sufficient. And then for the relative charges, we want plus one for a proton, minus one for an electron and zero for a neutron. And hopefully you're aware that whenever they say relative charge, you have to be giving that as a numerical value. It's not enough to just say positive and negative and neutral. So then we're ready to start writing a description of what this atom actually looks like and where these particles are found. So I'd start out by saying that an atom consists of a small dense nucleus and that that nucleus contains the protons and the neutrons. And then I would probably just include in brackets that the protons have a relative mass of one and a relative charge of plus one and the neutrons have a relative mass of one and a relative charge of zero. So if you've made it quite clear like that, that the numbers are referring to relative mass and relative charge, you really don't need to write the words out in full. Although it is important that you've indicated which one is which. I wouldn't just write one and plus one in a bracket and expect the examiner to know which way around they were because that wouldn't be fair and I wouldn't get the credit for it. Then I'm going to say that surrounding that nucleus, there are electrons. And they, of course, have a very small relative mass and a relative charge of minus one. And they're found orbiting in shells. I should probably include that most of the atom is empty space. Or I might even put a number on it and say that the nucleus makes up about one ten thousandth of the whole of that atom. I could also include that the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Now, for a question like this, it's going to be level marked. So to get into those five and six marks, I need to make sure that I've answered all of the parts of the question. So have I got some kind of description that talks about a nucleus and shells around the outside? Have I named all three of the subatomic particles? Have I mentioned all of their relative masses? And have I mentioned all of their relative charges? If I've done all of those things, I can have six marks. Tomorrow, for day three of the six mark challenge, we're going to look at one of the physics required practicals. Remember, you can find a link to all of the questions that accompany the videos for this week in the description below. And there's also a playlist that you can use to find all of the videos in this series. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you found this useful and that we'll see you again tomorrow for day three of the six mark challenge. If you have found it useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE science revision videos coming soon.